we see this with investors. We see this overall in the real estate market. You know, I've been on this planet long enough and doing real estate long enough to understand and see the cycles of real estate. And of course, when we go through certain times like we did, for example, in the past, let's say two or three years, right through to the end of 2022, coming into 2023, everybody's a real estate genius. Everybody's making money. And oh my gosh, there's a lot of unrealized gains on the table. And although there are some realized gains and then the wheels come off the bus and the next thing you know, I'm an idiot. You know, there is that I'm a genius. I'm an idiot. And then all of a sudden it kind of shakes out those that are really committed to the path of, you know, investing in real estate, selling real estate, supporting. To your point, it is the minute you go from going from transactional to relational, it changes the game. You become that trusted advisor. And that, however, takes patience. It also takes a frame of mind that says, this isn't money today. This is actually waiting for the right opportunity to present it to my client in a way that they benefit, we benefit. So you're always loading the, I guess, the top end of the funnel, but that doesn't necessarily translate into money today. You've got to take the time to nurture those relationships, make sure that you're literally delivering on what it is that they're looking for. Um, and, I'm, and I'm recapping, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. So if I just open up that space for you, what have you got to kind of share in that regard? Yeah, I, I, I would think your listeners, particularly real estate agents who are listening, they would be shocked at the amount of business my team turns down. Uh, we have the phone ringing off the hook for people who are trying to get out of the market. They're trying to list their homes, particularly pre-construction condos, which I think we'll, we'll probably touch on in a little bit. You could do what's called an assignment. So people are now at that point where they're supposed to be closing on these properties that they bought four years ago. Obviously the market changed, interest rates have gone up and they want to sell. Well, guess what? As a real estate agent, if I take that listing, I'm going to make another call it five points on that plus the money that I already made. But oftentimes I'm telling my clients, look, if you can close, I'm telling you not to sell because let's ride this wave. I, you know, the real estate market here in Toronto goes up and down upwards. Well, same with pretty much everywhere, but Toronto, you know, like we have some, some found key foundational things that are going on where the real estate market continues to go up. Yeah. We go through these down periods, but it's going to go back up. And so I tell my clients, look, don't sell. So I'm missing out on those five points that I could have been making, but I know that that's the right thing for the client because I know they'll be taking a loss if they sell today. Or we'll have have uh, people who come to us who say, Laura, I want to buy another pre-construction condo and I'll take a look at their portfolio and I'll say, guys, we're putting too many eggs in one basket. Like you already have three pre-cons. Let's make sure one, one of these closes first so that we know that you can close on these. And then maybe we'll think about doing something else. So again, that's waiting for future dollars. I, I could have easily sold any of those clients anytime today, taken the money and ran off into the sunset. But instead I'm like, look, I want this. I plan on doing this business for a long time. And I want to make sure that my clients feel like they're well represented. Like I actually care about helping them build wealth in real estate, not just buying, you know, one property or selling one property. Well, I mean, from a rain perspective, the real estate investment network perspective, you know, that's why REC is a trusted partner because we share in a fundamental philosophy, which is it isn't really about the short term relationship that we're trying to build. It isn't the one off when we consider that. And this is interesting is that in the, to the degree that I've worked with many realtors who are not investor focused versus investor focused realtors. It's a totally different view of the world. And when we go to, let's say we do a little bit of training with realtors ourselves over the years that we've done, you really start to see that the realtor who's selling a home, they get really good at that. But it is very transactional by nature. You know, how often do some does somebody buy a home? You know, and then you're hoping for a referral from, you know, the brother, the uncle, the friend that says, oh, I had a great realtor. If you want to buy, you know, go see Laura. Whereas you're looking at it or investor focused realtors are looking at it going, I can look after this particular client who may do two, three, five, 10, 50 deals. And that's what I want to support. So you're actually going into I'll, I'll call it a bit of a partnership in terms of the more that you help manage their success, the benefit is to you as well. But yeah. it is really a kind of a win-win scenario for both of you. You you hit the nail on the head. I and and uh, a client that comes to mind is actually this this wonderful woman. I won't name her name, but she lives in Vancouver, and she started buying property with us 
um, in early 2020. And since then, she's bought nine properties with us. So think mm -hmm. about that, guys. Like, we're always, everyone's always saying, where do I get the leads from? I need more lead generation ideas. The leads are in your database. I've never met this woman. I've never, the only way I've seen her is through her driver's license. I don't actually, like if she walked down the street, I wouldn't know her, but she's mm -hmm. done nine deals with me. And the reason is, is because we're properly managing her portfolio, looking at the timeline, looking at all her deposit payments. We've told her like, look, I don't think you should be buying any more of these properties here in Toronto. You might want to like spread it around, but I've done my part you know, by helping educate her and, and she does multi-transactional guys. So it's like, you don't have to put any more money towards it. I, I no Google AdWords required, no dollars, no extra marketing dollars, just a phone call, just following up and continuously providing value. And you can get nine deals out of one person. And so I think that's really the key when you work with investors is that you don't need a lot of them. You just need a handful of people who understand what investing in real estate means, what it looks like. And if they don't understand it, well, Here's an opportunity for you to provide that education and then and then really to hold their hand and kind of and lead them the way. I think where a lot of people get nervous is that they don't know where to find opportunities. They don't know how to crunch the numbers and assess the deals because the emotions kind of removed with investors. Right. It's not about, oh, I can picture my family living in this and eating kitchen at the breakfast nook and the dog running in the backyard and the kids growing up and me marking their heights. It's not about that. It's like, does the do the numbers make sense? And so it's really important for, for realtors to get that education, to learn, like, what do I need to know? How do I work a pro forma? Where do I find these deals? Um, where do I find investors? Or how do I help educate the people in my database to become investors? So those are the different questions you need to be asking yourself. And that's the education that you need to get as a realtor to really get into that investor market space.